Welcome to session number five, Gender, Race, and Power. Today our discussion will be a bit different as we discuss the 2018 film Come Sunday, a story based on the career of evangelist Carlton Pearson, and we'll also be reading chapter four, Female Televangelists and the Gospel of Sexual Redemption in Marla Frederick's book, Color Television, American Religion Gone Global. To begin with, Come Sunday is a 2018 film starring Chiwetel Ejiofor as evangelist Carlton Pearson. Born in 1953 in San Diego, California, Pearson attended Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, where he was mentored by evangelist and prosperity gospeler Oral Roberts, who in the film is played by Martin Sheen. I have told you there is no time for that. Under Roberts's mentorship, Pearson became an associate evangelist within the Oral Roberts Evangelistic Association. By 1981, however, he formed his own church, the Higher Dimensions Evangelistic Center, which became one of the biggest churches in Tulsa. Uh, that I feel like God has called me to do is bridge gaps, not only between cultures and nations, and denominations and people but generations and they was always and see they were they were we were an oppressed people pressed on the job or pressed in the home not much money very little if any education and low caste I mean God has brought us from a long way some of y'all know that. and we were fasting and praying and none of us had very much money and we didn't have anything in the promise of our future but Jesus and some of them old saints used to stand up in testimony service Look like the Lord would just give them songs just hot off the wire. They maybe out of their prayer life. You know what the brags, what they what was happening there. Something way down on the inside. One of the old mamas would get up and sing a song and they'd look right at you and say, Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Come on and help me sing it choir. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. During this time, Pearson was one of only two black evangelists to host a nationally syndicated television ministry program, the other being Frederick Price, who we'll discuss next session. His church welcomed an average of 6,000 in weekly attendance, while he claimed that he reached millions of people weekly on television. His ministry gave platforms to other prosperity gospel preachers and T.D. Jakes and Joyce Meyer. I believe that God wants us to be blessed, but I think he wants us to have prosperity with a purpose. Not just some kind of selfish, self-centered thing, but he wants us to be equipped to reach out to other people. It's also important to note that in the 2000 election, Pearson campaigned on behalf of George W. Bush an Evangelical United Methodist, and Pearson has also occupied a role in popular culture, often commenting on black excellence, the church, and the LGBTQ community. Now, to kind of transition into our other source today, Marla Frederick's Color Television, Chapter 4, Marla Frederick is Professor of Religion and Culture at the Candler School of Theology at Emory University. She earned her PhD from Duke University, and she employs an interdisciplinary approach to examining the overlapping spheres of religion, race, gender, media, politics, and economics. And of course, as we talked about last session, Colored Television looks at the influence of these ministries beyond the United States, where complex gospels of prosperity and sexual redemption mutually inform one another while offering hopeful yet socially contested narratives of personal uplift. In this particular chapter, chapter four, televangelist, female televangelists and the gospel of sexual redemption, Frederick demonstrates how the rise of televangelists like Juanita Bynum, Paula White, and Joyce Meyer, and their explicit testimonies of sexual trauma and redemption those actually signal fundamental shifts in American culture. And their testimonies have opened conversations about sexuality, violence, and women's bodies. Now, they don't simply raise these questions. These figures, Bynum, White, and Meyer, they seek to provide answers to these questions. So let us 
let us consider a few overarching questions that will help us interrogate the prosperity gospel's relationship to gender, race, and power. The first question is this, how does the prosperity gospel understand sexuality and the body? Does an individual have agency and control over their body? What happens when the body doesn't perform? Or what happens when it doesn't align with the values of the prosperity gospel? Along similar lines, how does the prosperity gospel understand or construct gender? In other words, how does the prosperity gospel construct gender hierarchies, gender roles, and expectations within its social and theological milieu? Or to simplify it even more, how does the theology of the prosperity gospel justify, construct, or make sense of gender identity? What does it say about the role of men or women or the LGBTQ community? Now, this is a general question, but one I think it is valuable to consider for this week's sources. How does the prosperity gospel leverage power? What is power? Who has it? How is it given and how is it taken away? And finally, as we are considering a film drama and then a chapter that highlights the very public lives of female televangelists, how is the prosperity gospel represented in popular culture? Or more specifically, how is the prosperity gospel represented through the lens of racial minorities and women? And as we're all learning to think like historians, how do these representations make normative or non-normative judgments about the theology and practice of the prosperity gospel?